What are the reasons that Christians don't witness? I suppose one reason is they don't think they have the answers if someone asks them a difficult question. Well, I will tell you this, that by the time you have all the answers, there won't be anyone to witness to. You ought to practice this in front of the mirror. Say, I don't know. So when someone asks you a question you don't have the answer to, say, I can answer that in three words, I don't know. But here's something I do know, right? That's what the blind man said. One thing I know. I know my sins are forgiven and I have peace with God. And so if we're going to wait until we have all the answers, we'll never witness. A second reason that we don't witness is because we feel our life doesn't measure up. Well, again, God isn't asking for perfect people or he wouldn't have asked any of us. But he does want honest people people who are prepared to keep short accounts with God. And it may be that uh, you may have to go to your family or your workmates and say, you know, I'm a Christian and I shouldn't have done that. And set the thing right so that you can be a witness. You know, the story of Lazarus, the, there was a stone in the way and Jesus could have spoken a word and blown the, uh, the, the stone to atoms. But he said to the disciples, you move the stone. And so maybe there's some loved one of ours that's still dead in sins and it's in our power not to raise them from the dead, but to move a stone that's in the way. But maybe uh, the third most important reason why people don't witness is because they're afraid it may cost them. We're afraid of what people might think of us. You know, we wouldn't worry what people thought of us if we realized how little they did. They don't go home and think about you at night. What they think about you doesn't matter a thing. What they think about Christ determines their eternal destiny. The Lord wants to strengthen us in service for him because naturally we're very weak. And the scripture says the Lord is my helper. He doesn't do the witnessing, he lets me do it. But he's standing by and he's saying, here, say this, try this. I remember 10 years ago, a group of us had gone to Little Rock, Arkansas on a gospel campaign. And a, a young lady came along, and when she arrived there, she said, what am I doing here? I'm terrified. In fact, the first morning, uh, she lost her breakfast uh, because she was so nervous. And she thought, I better go back to my hotel room and pray for boldness. Now, when she got there, there was a Spanish-speaking woman cleaning her bedroom. And she greeted the woman in Spanish, and the woman said, what are you doing here in Little Rock? She thought, here goes. And so she began to explain to the woman why she was in Little Rock to share the good news. And as she explained the gospel, the woman said, this is what I need. And tears were running down her face and she said, why did no one ever tell me this before? She, she, she said, could I have this gift today? And right there, this dear woman put her trust in the Lord Jesus. She said, there are 10 other cleaning ladies in, in the hotel and they need to hear this too. Could you have lunch with us? and six of those ten women put their trust in the Lord Jesus. May we begin to see the people around us as eternal souls who are going to live forever somewhere.